Hey there, it's Bree, and this is my November wrap up. In the month of November, I read a total of 33 books. That's mostly because I read a lot of novellas. I'll link down below my Thanksgiving reading vlog where I talk about all of these novellas. I will also link down below my wrap ups or my recent reads because that will have me talking about all of these books in depth. In this video, I'm just gonna give you some stats and I'm gonna list all the books that I read and their ratings. I'm not gonna talk too much about them or what I thought about them because I've already talked about those in my recent reads. Like I said, I read a total of 33 books. I didn't have any one-star reads. I had three two-star reads. I had four three-star reads, six four-star reads, nine five-star reads, two DNFs. I reread four books and I don't count those toward my star ratings because if I reread them, that usually means that I gave them five stars. That's why I'm rereading them. I had six all-time favorites. So in my rating system, I, I give five stars pretty frequently because if there's nothing wrong with it and I really enjoyed the book, I'm going to give it five stars. But there are some books that I think are like all-time favorites, like favorite favorites. And I know that a lot of times people will give books like that five stars and the books they just liked four stars, but that's not usually how I do it. So I had six of them this month, which is kind of crazy. Oh, and I'm currently reading two books. But out of all of those books that I read, 27 of them were new adult or adult. Five of them were YA, which is more than usual, and a lot of those were all-time favorites. <laughs> and then 19 of them were contemporary romances, seven of them were paranormal, two of them were, were historicals, I read one sci-fi, I read three fantasies, and then I participated in one buddy read, I guess two readathons, technically two readathons, because one of the books that I read was like at the tail end of November, and that was part of the romance takeover readathon. So I read one book toward that in November. And then I also have some in the beginning of November that were from the paranormal romance readathon. Out of all of those books, 14 of them were audiobooks. 16 of them were ebooks, which is way more than normal. And that was because I was binging on those Kindle Unlimited books. And then I read three physical books. One of the books that I read was an ARC and I didn't read any graphic novels this month. I also didn't read any nonfiction this month either, surprisingly enough, or any non-romance books. It was all romance this month and that is pretty average and pretty normal for me. So I am currently reading two books. I'm actually, like, I feel like I'm kind of spaced out in this video because the book that I'm reading right now or listening to on audio, I'm almost done with it. And like, that is where my head is right now. I'm so deeply invested in this book. And that is Bring Down the Stars by Emma Scott. It's so freaking good. I'm almost done with it. I'm reading this as part of the Romance Takeover over Readathon. This is part of the Beautiful Hearts duet. It's very emotional read. This is a love triangle romance. It's about this girl who is dating this guy and she loves him because of like his poetry and how he writes these beautiful letters to her but she's also very intrigued by his best friend and the two guys are like extremely extremely close they've been very close since high school it's it's so good. It's so good. And things are happening right now. And like, that's where my head is at right now. So if I feel, if I seem off in this video, it's because of this book. And then I just, I'm reading this next book physically. So it's probably going to take me like the entire readathon to finish it, but that's okay because it is by Autumn Gray and I love Autumn Gray. This is Breaking Gravity. And this is the second book in the, oh, what does she call this? Falling series, I believe. I'm finally picking this one up. I've been slowly but surely going through her backlist. This book is really good. As you can see, I'm not very far into it. This is a teacher student romance and the heroine is the sister of the heroine in falling back skyward. Fall back skyward. I can't even, I can't speak right now. My head is like so in that book. I'm obsessed with this one too. And I feel like I did myself dirty. Like someone commented on my romance takeover readathon TBR. And she was like, you're trying to kill yourself with these emotional books that you're reading. And I didn't realize <laughs> that a lot of the books that I chose for this readathon are super emotional. But I know that Bring Down the Stars is because that's what Emma Scott is known for. And I'm sure this one will be too because Autumn Gray is kind of known for that too. So I don't know how I'm gonna survive <laughs> this readathon, reading all these books, but they're really, really good so far. So anyway, those are the two books that I'm currently reading. They're amazing, I love them. Let's move on to the books that I have already read. So I'm going to go ahead and go through these. I'm gonna start with my DNFs and then go all the way up to my all-time favorite reads actually. 
So all of these are going to be in order that I enjoyed them. So I DNF'd two books this month, like I said. The first one that I DNF'd was Broken Magic by India Kells. Yes, India Kells. It's supposed to be a forbidden romance between a shifter and a witch. And I think there was supposed to be a love potion involved, but the love potion portion like never really happened. I don't know. It was just super slow moving. I wasn't super into it. So I... DNF'd it. And then I also DNF'd The Christmas Wedding Dance by Lachelle Turner. This one I DNF'd at like 30% because I did not like any of the characters in it. The heroine's an influencer and like that's all she cared about in life was being a social media influencer and it was driving me crazy. I actually DNF'd technically three books this month. The other one I DNF'd was like the lesbian Christmas elf, but I literally read not even the full first paragraph of it and I DNF'd it. I, it's, it was just, it was that bad. And so I just like immediately DNF'd it. So I didn't even count. I didn't even have time to add it to Goodreads before I DNF'd it. <laughs> so I didn't count it in this. I ended up rereading the Nightwalker series. This is not part of Nightwalker series. <laughs> I hate that I grabbed the wrong book. Um, I'm missing a couple, but um, I reread the Nightwalkers series by Jacqueline Frank. These are books that I've been obsessed with forever. This was the very first adult romance that I ever picked up, so it has a very special place in my heart. This series holds up. It's so amazing. You can watch my recent reads for me to talk more about it, but the Nightwalker Walkers are basically a bunch of creatures of the night, so there are demons that are like these very sophisticated, noble creatures. There are vampires, they're lycanthropes and shifters. There are a bunch of different night creatures, but this is mostly about the demons. Although this book, Damien, is about a vampire and they're super, super steamy, super well-written. The underlying storyline that flows through all of these is really, really strong, really good. So highly recommend these. I've reread them a million times and I reread them for the Paranormal Romance Readathon. So I didn't read the entire series. I read the first through fourth books, which is Jacob, Gideon, Elijah, and Damien. Jacob will always be my favorite, but I think Gideon is like my second favorite and Damien's probably my third. So let's go on to the books that I read this month. So starting with my two star reads, first is The Alien Before Christmas by Luna Hunter. This is a alien Christmas romance and the alien is Santa Claus and he's also the love interest. That's all I'm going to say about that one. It wasn't good. And then um, A Christmas Dickens by Virginia Love. This was an absolutely ridiculous <laughs> novella. Um, these are all available on Kindle Unlimited, by the way. Definitely check out my reading vlog to learn more. This is ridiculous. It reminded me of Smashing the Pumpkin King, but a thousand times worse. Basically, Santa sneaks into this girl's house. Not sneaks in. He like comes into this girl's house to like leave presents or something and do his Santa thing. And then she comes down and catches him. And he's like, I know what you want for Christmas. And then he shapeshifts into a hot guy and they mess around and then her husband comes home and he gets involved too. It's ridiculous. It's not meant to be taken seriously. I did not take it seriously. It was just, it was ridiculous. Next was Dirty Little Secret Santa by Alexis Adair. This is part of the Santa's Coming series. Um, this was just a super short and kind of dumb. It was like a romance between this guy and this girl who are getting set up by Santa in magical ways. And the hero was kind of awful. Next, moving on to my three star reads. The first one is Seated by Santa by Penny Prize. I gave this one three stars only because it's part of a series and it seems like the series might be interesting, but I really didn't understand what was going on in it. Basically, it's about this girl who relationship with a hot Santa Claus, like he's actually Santa. He And Santa has some rivalry with some other dude and she's pregnant by him. There was like really, it was almost like reading a portion of a book. I might have liked it if I read the other books. I might read the other books. I don't know. Anyway. Then the other three star read was Breaking the Silence by Katie Allen. This is a romance between this guy who is kind of a sheltered, socially awkward guy who is a computer programmer. He works from home and he it's a romance between him and this girl who like walks her dog outside of his house all the time and he's like lusting after her. It has a lot of drama, a lot of angst, and it was just meh. And then next is Snowed In by Cher Dillard. This is another Kindle Unlimited Christmas romance. This one was cute. It's very fade to black, which I wasn't expecting because I think this is part of the Santa's Coming 
series. It is. And it's about this girl who on Christmas Eve, she gets in a car accident in the blizzard and she calls for a tow truck. She's not injured or anything. Calls for a tow truck and it's a romance between her and the tow truck driver. And I think he also owns an inn because it's like a small town. And so he ends up letting her stay with him. And then the next three-star read was Dirty Santa by Daphne Loveling. This one is a motorcycle club Christmas romance. It's about this girl who moves in next door after her divorce with her, she's got a seven year old. She move, moves in next door to this guy who's in this like motorcycle club. He's like this bad boy. He's like outside fixing his car and she's always like watching him and he like sees her watching him and then her washer breaks and she has, it's since it's Christmas Eve, it's like leaking everywhere, but her landlord won't come out and fix it and she can't get a hold of any plumbers. And so she runs outside and asks him if he knows any plumbers and he's like, I can fix it. And so he comes in. <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling it like that. But anyway, so he comes in. It's their romance. Whatever. It was fine. And then um, moving on to my four-star reads. The first one is Awakened, the Oracle Chronicles, book number one by Mooney Boyce. I read this one for the paranormal romance readathon. This is a romance between an oracle and a shifter. It's a forbidden romance as well. He is there to protect her, and he's not. She's not supposed to know that he exists, and then she like figures it out. Yeah. So this is a series. The series seems really interesting, though. The next four-star read is Oh Snowy Night by Ella Good. This was another Christmas novella that I read and this one was cute. I liked it a lot. It's a grumpy sunshine kind of romance and it's also like mountain man lumberjack hero. She ends up having to stay with him. She gets snowed in with him because she, I think she ends up stopping at his house because she has to go to the bathroom on the way, but like maybe her car breaks down or something. For one reason or another, it's forced togetherness, grumpy sunshine. It's cute. And then A Holiday Temptation by Tiffany Patterson. This is another Christmas novella, but this one was pretty emotional. The hero, he was in a really bad accident that was caused by the heroine. And so she ends up like kind of ditching him after he's injured for that. It ends up being this hate to love situation, but she ends up moving back to the town they used to live in and has to end up working with him unexpectedly. So it's a hate to love thing, but then they keep getting thrown together and having to work together and stuff and ends up developing into more. And it was good. I really liked it, but very, very emotional, much more emotional than I was expecting. Next is Wrong Bed, Right Guy, Come Undone, book number one by Katie Robert. This is my least favorite Katie Robert book that I've read so far. It was still good, but the heroine was getting on my nerves. I love the premise of it. It's about a girl who has had a thing for her boss for a really long time. They work at this art gallery and her boss lives, I think like in the loft above it. And she finally decides she's been like putting out signals to him for a long time. He has not like like done anything about it. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to sneak into his apartment wearing like sexy lingerie. And then that's how I'm going to get things going. So she sneaks into his apartment and crawls into bed with him, but doesn't realize it's not him in the bed. It's his brother. <laughs> so anyway, it's their romance and it was, it was good. It just wasn't my favorite Katie Robert. And then the other four star read is Unloved by Katie Regnery. This is a kind of like survival-y type romance. It's about, I'm sorry, my choker is like actually choking me. I put it way too tight. The heroine's fiance, fiance dies in like a really intense way. He was texting her as he was like dying and he was starting to text the mountain that he like really wanted to do. They wanted to go there together and climb it. So she decides she's gonna do it by herself, which turns out to be a bad idea, surprise, surprise, because she ends up getting attacked by this like dude. And then she ends up getting saved by this guy who is like this loner who lives on the mountains because his father was a serial killer and he thinks that he has serial killing blood in him, which is gonna make him like evil. And so he like, lives like a loner, but then he can't help but save her. And so it's their romance. And yeah, I gave that one four stars. And then the other four star read is The Duke and I. It's Bridgerton's book number one by Julia Quinn. I read this as part of the Bridgerton readathon. I guess I participated in three readathons then because technically I did read that for this. This one is about a duke and his father was freaking awful and basically like shunned him because he had a stutter. And so he ends up like really working hard to cover up his stutter, but he also it also makes him very aware of how he speaks and he, he doesn't speak very often. And then the Bridgertons is like this big, very close family. There's a bunch of brothers and a sister. It's a romance between that Duke and then this sister. And it first is like a fake dating, fake marriage situation. Then it turns into lovers. There is a big consent issue in this book, which is why I knocked it down a star, but it was really good. And I definitely want to read on in the series. And then 
on to my five star reads. So the first one is A Hunger Like No Other. It's Immortals After Dark, book number one by Kresley Cole. This is a very popular paranormal series. I really liked this one. This is a faded mate situation. The hero is like locked up and being tortured or something for a really long time. And then he senses his mate like above ground and he like breaks free, like ripping his leg off basically to go get her. And she's not quite what he expects. It's really good. And then... Romancing the Duke, Castles Ever After by Tessa Dare. This is a historical romance Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's about this girl whose father wrote these children's books. He ends up passing away and leaving her with like nothing but this random castle (laughs) that is inhabited by a scarred and blind hero. So Beauty and the Beast retelling, it's really good. And then the other five star read is The Boss Who Stole Christmas. It's Reindeer Falls, book number one by Jana Aston. I absolutely want to continue in this series because I loved this book. It was such a great holiday romance. This one was like if The Hating Game was a holiday romance novella. Only it has a Jana Aston twist on it. So you have a lot of like those super cringy moments that are fantastic. And I loved it. It was really good. Next five star was Spoiler Alert, Spoiler Alert, book number one by Olivia Dade. This one has a plus size heroine and it's like a fandom geeky romance. The hero plays the actor of the fandom, like the TV show that the fandom is based on. And the heroine is a cosplayer and she ends up posting this picture of herself cosplaying the hero's love interest and it ends up garnering a lot of attention and his attention too. And then he sees that like all of these trolls are like trolling her on it and like making fun of her for being plus sized and cosplaying this girl. And so he in retaliation to them, ends up asking her out and then they end up going out and it's their romance and it's adorable. And then next is The Roommate by Rosie Dannon. Actually, I probably like spoiler alert better than this one. But anyway, The Roommate by Rosie Dannon is obviously a roommate romance. It's about this girl who like moved across the country to go live with her boyfriend, but her boyfriend sucks and he like leaves and she ends up living there, but with this with his roommate and his roommate happens to be a porn star and it turns into this really great friends to lovers romance. Next is Crazy Stupid Bromance. It's bro- the Bromance Book Club, book number three by Lissa K. Adams. This is the third book in the Br- Bromance Book Club series, obviously. The Bromance Book Club series is about this book club, this romance novel reading book club, and it's all these men that are in this book club. They're all like high-powered men too. They either own their own business or they're athletes or whatever. It's them reading romance books to try to learn how to be better men and treat their women better and be better in relationships. It's adorable. I love this series so much and I love this book. This is an epic friends lovers romance done really, really well. And it's also very funny and it has a murderous cat in it. It's great. Next, I read and loved Warrior in the, of the Wild. I can never remember if it's of or in. Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. This is a super unique YA fantasy with a really strong romance in it. It's about this girl who was raised by her father who had always wanted a son and she has to compete in this, I forget what it's called, but she has to compete in these trials and if she doesn't win, then she's like shunned to the wild and has to complete this impossible task. And everyone assumes that she's going to win because she's a badass and she's amazing, except she loses unfairly. And so she ends up getting shipped off to the wild and she is, her like impossible task is to kill this god who has been ruling over these lands and like expecting these crazy tithes from them. But she's a freaking badass and she's amazing like all of Trisha Levenseller's characters and it was really good, unique story, very good. And then the last five star read, well not the last five star read, but last five star read before I get to my all time favorites is The Warlord. The Warlord Wants Forever. It's Immortals After Dark, book 0.5 by Cresley Cole. I am obsessed with this novella. This was such a great prequel, and I feel like it's totally fine to read before you start the series because I read it before I started the series. I didn't feel lost at all. I loved it so much. This is one where the heroine, she is a Valkyrie, and then the hero is a vampire, and they are, I think they're like enemies, but anyway, she's like imprisoned when he comes and he's not coming to like rescue her. He's coming to like invade the place that she is prisoner at. I loved it because she just like taunts him and uses her sexuality like against him to torture him. And it's freaking amazing. I love the heroine. Her name is Mist. I love her so freaking much. And I want to read on in this series if only to see her more because I love her and I love their relationship too. It's so good. And then moving on to my all-time faves, like I said, there's a lot. I think there's actually seven and not six 
like I said. Anyway, the first one is The Doctor. It's Nashville Neighborhood, book number one by Nikki Sloan. This was my very first book by Nikki Sloan, and I loved it. So this one is like a mix between birthday girl and your dad will do. It's an age gap romance between a girl and her boyfriend's father. It's called The Doctor because her boyfriend's father is a doctor, but it's not as slow burn as Birthday Girl, and it's not as like no plot as <laughs> your dad will do, like in the best way, but it's somewhere in between and it's really good. Next is Puddle Jumping. It's Puddle Jumping book number one by Amber L. Johnson. This is a YA contemporary romance between this girl who, well, this girl and this boy who as children, they used to play together because their parent, their mothers were friends, but then their mothers decide it's probably a better idea that they not see each other in the, anymore, the kids anyway, because the heroine in it, extremely accident prone. And the hero, he's like this very watchful, quiet, artistic kid, but he also is autistic. And so I think that's kind of why they end up separating them for a little while. One day the heroine goes to high school and he is there and he's going to the high school now too. And so they rekindle their relationship. It's so sweet, oh, so heartwarming and heart-wrenching. It's so, so good. Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. I can't stop talking about this one because I love it so much. It also has dog fur on it. Um, this is a Tarzan retelling. It's the Tarzan retelling of my dreams. It's so, so good. And then another all-time favorite is a book that I just finished not too long ago, and it's so freaking good. I read it for the Romance Takeover Readathon. It is Heartbreak Warfare by Heather M. Orgeron, Orgeron I think, and Kate Stewart. This book is super, super emotional. So many triggers. It's intense. It's an intense book. It's a military romance and it's a love triangle. And it's the type of love triangle where you have no idea who is going to end up with who at the end. So the heroine, she is happily married. She is also in the military. She has a son. She loves her husband. She ends up getting shipped off. Nothing's supposed to really happen to her, but then something does happen to her and she ends up forming this really, really strong bond with someone she was deployed with because they go through this intense thing together and so they end up having this unbreakable bond and then she has to go back and she's dealing with like post-traumatic stress syndrome and also like her feelings for this other guy and it's it's intense it's intense and it's really really good and then my next all-time favorite is actually a duet and that is letters to the lost and more than we can tell by bridget kemmerer these are ya contemporary romances and they're so freaking good so this book is about a girl who is writing letters to her dead mother and a boy who ends up writing back to her. Like he reads the letters and then he writes back to her and it's an amazing meet cute. And then this book is about the guy's friend and his friend is like my favorite character possibly in YA contemporary romance that there ever is. This one, the hero is an extremely troubled boy and the heroine is like this gamer girl who is like getting harassed after she built this whole game and it's like it's intense this is an intense book but it's really really good this is such a great duet i love it and then my favorite reads of the month were daughter of the pirate king and daughter of the siren queen this is a duet it's by trisha levenseller and it's freaking amazing if you liked the shadows between us because of the heroine and how badass and ruthless she was and because of the hero who appreciated her for all of those things you will love this one. Also, if you love pirates and whether you like YA fantasy or not, this is so freaking good. This series, oh, I am absolutely obsessed with it and I loved it. It is my favorite read of November, hands down. It was very easy to choose this month because I blew through these books in like one day. Highly, highly recommend this. It's such a great story, such great characters. It has a great found family element in it as well. Like the heroine, she has her own crew and everything. She's this like pirate captain. Her crew is like made up mostly of women and she has a super strong bond with them. Oh, it's so good. It's so, so good. Both of these books. Absolutely amazing. I love them so much. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all the books that I read in November. Let me know down below if you read any of these and what your favorites were. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy reading.